Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional civil engineer and I've been using Bluebeam for a little over seven years now. In this video, I'll show you how to perform clean, organized quantity takeoffs that you can do directly in a PDF, so no AutoCAD needed. And as for bonus tips, I will show you how to do this more efficiently using the tool chest. With the tool chest, you'll be able to save this for later use and you can also share it with your team. And then lastly, I'll show you how you can directly export your quantity takeoffs into Excel straight from Bluebeam. But I'm ready to dive into it, so let's get to it. All right, so here I have a construction plan set open, and I will say that this is all public information. I have pulled a set of plans from SwiftMud public sources, and let's just scale this thing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to understand what the scale is of the drawing. So we are on a master paving, grading, and drainage sheet. So the scale is 100. So let's go over here to the measurements little tool Tool. And since it's already preset, I'm going to go to one inch equals 100. And you know, typically for quantities, I don't really like to go to like a quarter foot or a quarter inch or anything like that. I'm just gonna set the precision to one. I want quantities and just whole feet. So now since we have that set up, let me just show you some basic things that you can do maybe that you didn't even know. So if I wanted to start tabulating all of the storm, I can go over here to polyline length gonna go ahead and click that. Now, I think what's important about this exercise is I wanna show you how you can start things off all on the right foot. Now, if you start everything off on the right foot, it makes your quantity takeoffs really easy later, and you'll definitely see why. Now, I think organization is key and setting up a story is key. So for different size storm pipes, I like having a color code system. So for 18 inch RCP, I'm going to use orange, and then for 24 inch, I'm going to use green. But let's first just set some of this stuff up. So again, I have poly length set up. I'm gonna go to a color, I'm gonna select orange. The fill color doesn't matter. And I'm gonna set the opacity a little bit lower just so it serves more as a highlight and it doesn't cover the entire drawing there. I'm also going to increase this line width just a little bit, dial's fine. Now I don't wanna show both the segment value and the caption because then it'll duplicate on itself. I'm going to delete this little show segment values and then I'm gonna just show the caption right there. Now the most important thing with this and you have to pay attention, do you see this subject up here? I want to change this to 18 inch RCP. If you fail to focus on this step, you are going to have to do a whole bunch of work to reorganize your quantity takeoffs. This subject is going to correspond directly to a legend that we're going to build. All right, now that we're ready to quantify some of the 18 inch RCP, let's just go ahead and start getting to it. So I noticed that there's a stretch of 18 inch RCP here. I typically like to go between the middle of the box along the center right there to the middle, and then we'll go to here, and then we'll go all the way to the end of the mitered end. I'll double click. And this is what we have. Now I know some of the novice Bluebeam users will go, okay, well that was easy. Well, let me just take it a next step further and show you how you can start organizing your tool chest. That way, when you ever have to do quantity takeoffs again, you won't have to do what I was doing here. So I'm actually going to right click this guy and I'm going to do add to tool chest and you can put it right in my tools. However, let's kind of look at where this tool chest is. Let's go over here to the left of tool chest. I can actually create my own tool chest for future use called quantity takeoffs. And not only can I do that, but I can share this tool chest with anyone I want. So in order to create the tool chest, let's go up here to tool chest. And I'm gonna do manage tool sets. And notice how it shows you all the different tool sets. So I have a lot of these hidden for now. I'm gonna go ahead and add a tool set. I wanna create a new tool set and I'm gonna call this quantity takeoffs. Options, display, relative path, okay, sure. Sure, I'm fine with it living there. So now it'll live somewhere. I didn't know where it was going, but it lives somewhere. Now I've created my own tool chest. So I'm actually going to right click this now, add a tool chest, and I'm gonna do quantity takeoffs. That way, if I ever want to use this 18 inch RCP in this certain style, I can then use it. And all you have to do is click it, and you can drag it right in your drawing. So let's say if I wanted to get this 18 inch RCP right there, a little tidbit is you can hold down, you can hold down the shift key and you can actually take away some of these endpoints. 
Let me zoom in. Let me make sure this is right. Ah, I'm glad I caught this before I got too far. So you see how it's showing 30 feet and four inches? I actually don't really love that. I really just want whole feet. So in order to change it, you can go up here to the measurements again. And you see all these poly length measurement properties. I'm gonna go ahead and select this feet right there. And I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. Now what I should do again is add this to my tool chest. I'm gonna delete that first one. So you can easily go in here and press delete. So now whenever I drag this in, this is exactly what I want to see. Now, one piece of advice with this, the reason why I did that is because let's say if I had a mix of measurements that was using feet and inch and then feet, it would break up all of those separately on the legend. And I really, really don't want that. Let me actually, let me just show you. Let me show you what I mean. So now let's say if you are ready to create a legend, you can right click, you can do a legend. Let's do create new legend. I'll put that right here. And then watch this. If I were to go click up over here, add this to the legend, do you see how it makes it separate? See, this is something that you don't really want. You just want everything tallied up. So that's just one thing to pay attention to. Now, if you don't know about legends, you can go to your properties and edit how this looks. So you can make the background white. You can have a little red border if you wanted by doing line width, or if you just wanted to make that line width black, you can do it like that. You can also change the table style, maybe to some grid lines, if that looks a little bit better for your eyes. And then one thing that I love about this is you have different source pages. So this legend right here is only pulling from page one. So if I also wanted to pull it from another page, I could do so. Or if I wanted to create maybe a summary of pages, I can also do that. Since you guys are here to learn tidbits of how I would organize quantity takeoffs, you know, what I would do is I would have one full page of your quantity takeoffs just for that one page. And then maybe on the cover sheet, you can do your total quantities because this becomes important once you do individual sheets. I happen to be on a master plan, but let's say if you were to go to these each individual sheets here, you know, you would probably just want all the quantities on that one page. All right, so let me change this back and let's see if our table updates. So let's go to this measurements again. I'm gonna go to feet and let's watch our table update. Perfect, so do you see how that legend updated? So this is how I want things to look. Now, just to kind of prove to you guys what I was talking about with this uh, with this drainage table, let me go ahead and do another quantity takeoff here. I want this one. I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, it's asking me for a new scale. I actually, that's a good question. What is this scale? Every drawing should have a scale, guys. So this is one inch equals 50. So I got one inch equals 50. I want precision one. All right, let's restart this guy. Let me knock away some of these endpoints. All right, so this one's about 30 feet too. So let me go ahead and do legend and I'll do create new legend. I'll put that right over here, but let's actually watch this thing update. So I I'm at the properties dialog box right here. This source page is coming just from this page too. But if I were to do all pages, let's see how that updates. You see how that quantity updates. So now this legend is in fact adding up everything. So again, do as you will. I recommend doing it just for the, the source pages and then you can have one summary table. Also, just for workflow purposes, I know some of you may be saying, hey, why are you pulling these quantity takeoffs? That seems like it might take a, a while. Well, maybe we can start by doing this. Let's first click on this stretch of run right here. And I'm going to just set this as my default right here. And now whenever I do this poly length measure, it'll always be this 18 inch RCP. So for my workflow, you know, this becomes way easier. So what I could do is just go around and find all of the different 18 inch RCP, you know, like right there. You know, you can really start going around this whole site and that way it improves your, your workflow. And all of this gets added to this legend right here. Now, just to kind of cap off the storm section again, Let's go to this poly length. And then what we can do is set up the 24 inch RCP. And then I just wanna make that a different color. So let's do a color of, let's say, let's say green. Let's make sure everything's showing up how we want. We can add it to our tool chest for later. I'm gonna right click, add to tool chest, quantity takeoffs, and then bada boom. So then we can always use it for the future.
Also, you can play around with this thing. You can get a little bit more detailed. And like I said earlier, if you're working with a team, maybe you're a contractor, engineer, or whatever have you, I can export this tool chest to my team. It'll live in a file and they can import it right back into their files and they can always have it. All right, so last but not least, let me go ahead and add this to the legend. And then now it's in my legend. So, you know, this is how I would go about documenting storm quantities because what it does, is, especially if you're like an intern or entry level, or maybe you're just someone, you know, that's really trying to grow in your career, the more organized you can get, the better. Anyone should be able to come in here and read this like a storm. The final thing that I want to show you, at least for these storm quantities before we move on, is you can also do this count tool. And let's look at how we can add up some of these inlets. It's the same thing with the subject. You can call it curb inlet, and we can actually choose a symbol right here. You know, maybe we can do a square. Maybe let's die down the opacity a little bit. Okay, this is showing way too big of a square. So let me die down the scale a little bit. I almost want it to be similar. And I think red's good for this exercise. Oh, do you see how my subject changed? Let's change that back to curb inlet. Okay, now we're cooking. So now I can go around to all of the different curb inlets and start clicking them. And then what I can do is I can click those guys. I can add to the legend. And then now those are added to the legend. Now, if you wanted to resume this count, I can click on one of the structures and I can right click and then I can say resume count. That way I can continue to keep adding more inlets if I wanted to. Now let's say if I wanted to split all these up because every time I click one, it keeps showing the full count up here at four, which that's another good way to identify your count. I just wanna split them up so I can right click and do split all, and that way it's all individual. But look how it doesn't ruin the legend up here. So if you wanted to do something like that. Okay, the very last thing that I wanted to show you guys is how you can export this to a CSV file. So if you go down here in Bluebeam, there's a markups dialog box and you can see everything that you have added to this document. This includes all of your measurements. And what's cool about this is you can sort this however you want. You can change and edit any of the columns that you want. So let's say if you didn't really want the author to be exported, you know, you can delete this if you wanted to. In order to edit all of these columns, you can go up here to markups list, columns. I don't really need the date, at least for this. I technically don't even need the color because, you know, I'm just trying to export this to do a cost estimate. So I don't need the layer, I don't need the space, I don't really need the status. So I'll leave it like that for now. And if you go up to this export right here, this little export button, you can do a CSV, you can do a PDF, or you can just print a summary right there. So I can export as CSV, include measurement units. Okay, this is actually important. So do I want to include the measurement units or not? You can if you want to. If you're using this for a cost estimate, I'd highly suggest you just don't include the units. You should already be aware of what the units are. This will make it easier once you summarize things in Excel. So I'm not gonna include the units. Then we're gonna press okay. Let's see what we got. So now we have exactly what we need. We got the 18 inch RCP, 24 inch, and we got our curb inlets. It is showing all of these rectangles that I put, uh, but that can be easily deleted in Excel. Well, that's honestly all I have for today. I hope this was helpful. I wanted to show how you can cleanly and efficiently do quantity takeoffs in Bluebeam using some of the tool chest features. If you guys have any questions, please let me know, drop a comment, and I will be happy to answer. Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Who's got the axe here? Play this. I've been waiting way too long.